Welcome to the new video section on Learning Pies Park with Cloud Computing, brought to you by Implied Concepts. In this section we will do our first hands-on with Spark Context and RDD. We shall learn How to import Spark Context class in Python how to create a Spark context object using its native constructor, and what arguments to pass to use local machine cores. How to kill the Spark context object. How to peek into the methods within the Spark context. What is RDD? How to use RDD for collections like list. Okay, so let's get going with our first Spark job. We will learn in this coding exercise about Spark context, and how to initialize a Spark context object in Python. We discussed how Master Driver interacts with Cluster Manager via Spark context, which is the main entry point for Spark functionality. A Spark context represents the connection to a Spark cluster, and can be used to create RDD and broadcast variables on that cluster. We will also learn about RDDs in this section. Now, let's look into how in Python we can import the Spark Context class. Open Jupyter Notebook by typing PySpark in the command prompt. The installation process is captured in the previous videos. If you do not know how to start PySpark in Jupyter, please refer the videos again. Here I have created a new Jupyter Notebook file. Now type in the cell from PySpark import Spark context. Run the cell. You should not see any errors while running this command. We have imported Spark context class. To see the methods inside Spark context, type Spark context dot and press tab key. It will display full list of functions Spark Context can do. We are now going to initialize a Spark Context object from Spark Context class. Spark Context class has a constructor. First argument tells if we are going to use in local mode, which means local machine. And the second argument is the name of our Spark Context object. What happens when I type the following command in my Jupyter cell? sc equals Spark context local within square braces I will put 5 and then comma and the second argument I will pass as Spark context hands on. Okay, so this creates a Spark context object. The constructor takes many fields, but most used ones are local and name. Local indicates how many cores we want to use for the operation. We will look into cluster later on. Default is all available cores represented by asterisk within the square braces instead of 5 that I have put here. Second argument is name. You can give any name you want to your Spark context. We will look into other arguments later in the class. If you get the error saying value error. Cannot run multiple Spark contexts at once. It means you already have a Spark context initialized. There are two ways to deal with it. Either kill the context or use the existing one. Type sc.stop in your Jupyter cell. This method will kill my existing Spark context, and then I can initialize a new one. Use the existing instance of Spark context use the following command. This method gets the already created instance if exists, else creates a new one. Get or create method is used to share the Spark context by applications running under the same driver. This helps to share variables between applications. 
Don't get too confused, just remember that there are two ways to fix the error of preexisting Spark context. So, if I type sc equals sparkcontext.get or create, it will instantiate an object sc. If object is already there, then it will inherit all the attributes of Spark context created before, or else it will create the Spark context object with default attributes. See high level details of Spark context we created. Let's type sc in the new cell and run. It gives link to Spark UI. We will discuss this later. Then version of Spark used. Details of local or cluster and how many local cores used. In our case it is 5. And finally app name that we gave during instantiation. Spark revolves around the concept of a resilient distributed dataset RDD which is a fault-tolerant collection of elements that can be operated on in parallel. There are two ways to create RDDs. Parallelizing an existing collection in your driver program or referencing a dataset in an external storage system, such as a shared file system, HDFS, HBase, or any data source offering a Hadoop input format. Let's look into parallelizing collection first. Below I have a list of 100 integers. I use parallelize method to create the distribution data, RDD. Type with me in your Jupyter Notebook cell. Data equals range 1, 100. This will generate integers between 1 and 100 and store in data. There is no RDD created yet. This data equals sc dot parallelize data. This command will create a distributed dataset from data by parallelizing the data vector. To see the type of disk data variable we created, type disk data and run. It displays the disk data as RDD. Now that we have created distributed dataset using parallelize method of Spark context class. We can operate our distributed dataset that is disk data in parallel operations. Spark leverages lazy execution, so nothing has been executed yet. We can force Spark to do some work and take a peek into the data by calling take method on our RDD. Take of 50 shows first 50 elements of our distribution dataset. So, if I type disk data dot take 50. We can see, it displays first 50 elements of the distribution dataset. And finally, to see we are able to perform operation on RDD and if it works, let's do the following operation. I will enter disk data dot reduce lambda a comma b a plus b it returns 4950. This operation simply adds up parallel elements and sums them up. We will learn about map and reduce in the next hands-on. For now we know that RDD is working. This brings to an end to introduction to Spark Context and RDD. In the next lab, we will learn about second form of RDD parallelization by loading the data from the file systems.